Hey friends, welcome back to my blog. Thank you so much for reading these blogs. Thank you so much for listening to these videos. I work really hard on these and um, I really do hope that the information that I'm providing is helping you um, improve your relationship with your body and also with food. Um, so last week I was talking, um, in, the, in my last blog post, I was talking a little bit about um, damaged metabolisms and how the idea of a damaged metabolism is actually a myth. Um, and I'm going to really quickly recap that here. Um, you have to look at, and I know some of this sciencey stuff is boring, but if you understand human evolution and if you understand a little bit of our biology, it will help you understand why it seems like you can no longer lose weight. So if you're watching this video and you, um, you're you in that place right now where you've been trying to lose weight and you just can't seem to lose weight anymore or the weight seems to come back on faster than ever when you fall off of your diet um, or you see it feels like you're hungry all the time or you lose control around food, um, these are all warning signs that not that your metabolism is damaged, but that you have actually trained your body to put on weight quickly and store it uh, even and store it uh, faster or more efficiently. So looking back, I'm going to recap last week's blog post just very quickly. If you study human evolution or if you sort of just understand the background, so humans evolved over about the past 6 million years. Only within the past 100 years have we had access to food 24-7. Very easy to get food. So the biggest threat to the survival of our species for 6 million years was actually starvation. So our body um, has learned over 6 million years through evolution, through natural selection, um, our bodies have become beautifully adapted for gaining fat and for holding on to fat. Our bodies do not want to let go of fat stores because from an evolutionary, from a biological standpoint, that was not something that was going to help us propagate the species. So I hope that with that little bit of knowledge and that understanding, you can begin to understand um, some of the biological processes that take place inside the body when we go on a self-induced famine, otherwise known as a diet. And this is true mostly, most especially for diets where you're trying to lose weight very quickly, um, which anymore, it seems like all of the diets on the market, um, they're marketed, you know, lose 10 pounds in 10 days, or, you know, you go on this 21 day or 30 day plan and they promise all of this weight loss. And what tends to happen is people go on these diets and they do really well and they lose weight and then they fall off the diet or the diet ends. And what do you do? You go on a major bender and you eat everything in sight and you wind up putting that weight back on. The more times that you diet, the more times you lose weight and then regain it, um, you, you're actually teaching your body to be more efficient. Your body becomes more efficient at both putting on weight and holding on to fat. Um, but again, that is because from an evolutionary standpoint, our bodies are trying to keep us alive in case there is a famine. And when we diet, we prove to our body that there is indeed a famine. And so again, if you keep on yo-yoing back and forth, you are going to teach your body to be more efficient at fat storage. Unfortunately, it does not work the other way around. So your body will never learn to be more efficient at fat loss because again, for, that was just not a great survival strategy for humans over the past 6 million years. Our biology just hasn't caught up to our current environment. Um, our bodies have no idea that there is food constantly available. It only knows that when you go on a diet, especially a very restrictive diet where you're doing very low calories or um, if you're restricting certain food groups like carbohydrates, it only knows that all of a sudden there is less food available. And so what ends up happening is some people call this the starvation response. Um, but what ends up basically happening is you get this cascade of hormonal, uh, your, your brain starts to change. You get this 
cascade of hormonal um, changes that happen in the body, and it's not something that you can control. Um, so the hunger hormone ghrelin is upregulated, and um, this is basically a hunger hormone. This is what makes you, it's the hormone that makes you feel hunger. And with this hormone, when more, with more of it circulating in your bloodstream, this is why people tend to, um, you know, feel hungry all the time on a diet. You start thinking about food constantly, and you occasionally, um, you know, or sometimes more often than than you'd like to, or more often than not, you lose control around food. I've personally experienced this myself. Um, I've been on lots of diets since I, uh, since uh, college. I, when I started dieting. Um, and my prevalence of binges um, has gone, if, if I'm dieting, I'm also binging. Um, and the two seem to go hand in hand. And I believe that I have trained my body to, as soon as I start restricting, it starts sending out those signals, you know, that are going to send me into um, that binge behavior. So another hormone um, that when you start restricting food and your body starts sending out these warning signals, another hormone um, that... Um, that sort of changes is leptin. So leptin is down-regulated. Leptin is the satiety hormone. Um, it's the one that tells you to stop eating, that you've had enough food. So if this particular hormone is down-regulated, again, it works in concert with ghrelin. So if ghrelin is up and leptin is down, you are going to have, you know, incredible hunger, you know, you're going to be very hungry, you're going to have cravings, and probably not for things like kale. Um, and so again, you know, you get these cascade of hormonal events that are going to create behaviors in you that are unsettling, but in reality, completely normal um, to have if you are initiating this starvation response. Um, so again, you need to be really careful with dieting. If you are in that place right now where you're so desperate to lose weight that you're trying all of these different things and what you're noticing is that, you know, you um, uh, you feel like you're losing control around food sometimes and you're constantly hungry and you're constantly tired. These are all signs and signals from your body that the diet that you're on is probably too restrictive and that you are actually tripping these ancient biological mechanisms. And again, the more times you do this, the more times you go on a diet and you lose weight and then you regain it, this is why it is harder. This is why it seems harder and harder to lose weight over time. Um, because it's 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 not it's not something you're imagining it's actually happening it gets harder and harder to lose weight the more times you've lost and gained and um, it gets easier and easier to put the fat back onto your body. Your body becomes a very efficient fat storage machine if you teach it to be. So my advice to you after listening to all of this, if you are about to embark on another one of these crazy diets where you're trying to lose weight very quickly, um, think twice about it. Think about how many times you've been on a diet before. Think about how many times you've lost weight and regained it. Um, and, and again, if it seems like it's getting harder and harder, think really hard about what, you, what you're doing and what you want to accomplish. Most of us do not want to accomplish um, a body that is an expert at fat storage because our bodies are already that way. So anyway, I hope that this was helpful. Um, in the next installment of this particular blog series where I'm talking about metabolism, I am going to be talking about some solutions. So if you feel like you are in that place where you've really, you know, again, we haven't damaged our metabolisms. We've simply trained our metabolisms to do exactly what they were designed to do. When, when there's a famine, our bodies are designed to um, hold on to fat as, as much as it possibly can. Our bodies are designed to um, rev up those hunger hormones so that we seek food. Um, and our bodies are designed to um, help us put on fat as quickly as possible. And again, this is survival. Um, so if you feel like you're in that space where you have the quote unquote damaged metabolism um, and you've done a lot of yo-yo dieting, next week's post is going to be dedicated to some solutions 
um, that can help you over the long term get to a happier, healthier weight. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have questions, I invite that. You can post in the comments below on this blog or you can contact me via my contact page. So I hope you all have a great day and you enjoyed this video. Bye.